Hello, this is Mr. Mack, and this is the concept video, video on solving equations and inequalities that contain radicals. Let's start with equations that contain radicals, and let's take a look at a very simple example. If I say to you, for example, the square root of x is equal to 5, then um, if you look at this, you could probably say, well, x has to be 25 then, because when you take the square root of 25, you get 5. And that's true. So how do we solve this equation? Well, what we do, and most of the times when we're solving, equa solving equations, is we undo what has been done to the variable, and we do it to both sides. So in this particular case, if we're going to solve this equation, we want to undo square rooting, and the inverse of square rooting is squaring. So we would square both sides of the equation, and we would get x equals 25. Uh, now, you do have to be careful when you square both sides of an equation because you run the risk of introducing what is called an extraneous solution. So anytime you solve a, uh, an equation that contains a radical, it's very important to check your answer to see that it works in the original equation. Because you might have done nothing wrong in solving the equation, but still not have an answer. A very simple example of that would be square root x equals negative 16. Now, if you square both sides of this, the square root of x squared is x. And the square root of negative 16 squared is 256. And now, if you go back and take a look at it, though, the left-hand side of the equation is the square root of 256, and that's defined to be 16. The right-hand side of the equation is negative 16, and they are not equal. So even though this solution was done through an appropriate method, it gave you an answer that does not work in the original equation. So this root is what we call extraneous. And you have to check for extraneous solutions and do not report them as solutions because they don't really work. Now, uh, most of your equations, though, aren't going to be as simple as the square root of x equals 5 or the square root of x equals negative 16. So uh, there's going to be a couple of steps that you need to follow when you have an equation that contains a radical. Step one, uh, okay, and let's take a look at an example here. How about 3 plus the square root of 2x plus 1 equals 7? We'll use this as an, our example. And step one is isolate the radical. In other words, get the radical by itself on one side of the equation. Now to do this, easiest way here is to divide is to subtract three. So if we subtract three from each side, we get square root two x plus one equals four. Step two. Raise both sides of the equation to the power equal to the index of the radical. See, in this particular case, that's a square root. Even though we didn't write the index here, the implied index is 2. So we're going to raise both sides of this equation to the second power. Now, what that does is that gets rid of the square root on the 2x plus 1. The square root of 2x plus 1 squared is 2x plus 1. And on the right-hand side, we get 16. Step 3, solve the resulting equation. And I'm going to go ahead and write step 4 here while we've got it. Check! It's very important in these cases because if you don't, you may report an answer that actually doesn't work and your, your problem wasn't your solution, your problem was that you didn't check. So in this particular case, 2x plus 1 equals 16. We'll subtract 1 from each side. We get 2x equals 15. Divide both sides by 2. We get x equals 15 halves or 7.5. Now checking, we have 3 plus square root 2 times 7.5 plus 1. This is the left-hand side of the equation. And so we have 3 plus, now 2 times 7.5 is 15, square root of 15 plus 1, which is 3 plus square root 16, which is 3 plus 4, which is 7, which is what we were hoping for, 
And so it checks and we get to keep the solution of 7.5. Hooray! Now, sometimes when you get down to number three, your equation is still going to have a radical in it. If that's the case, when it says solve the resulting equation, that sends you back to number one, isolate the radical again. And let's take a look at an example of that. Okay. Um, well, in fact, let's do this. Let's just uh, take, what are we going to do? We're going to take this page and we're going to clone it. There we go. Now I'm going to take this page and erase everything that's up here. And then I'm going to erase everything that's over here. And is there anything else? Well, yeah, there's something. Okay. Uh, now I will take all of this. Whoa. whoa. I don't want to do that. I'll take all of this and we'll group it together, make it a little smaller, and move it up to the top so that we have the steps. Now, here we go. Here's a, here is an example of something like that. Let's do square root x plus 40 plus, no, minus, let's do minus, minus square root x minus 25 equals 5. All right, now, um, in this particular case, um, see, we have two radicals, so it's impossible to isolate both radicals. So you choose one and isolate that radical. That gives us square root x plus 40 equals square root x minus 25 plus 5. Now we'll square both sides. So on the left-hand side, this is easy, x plus 40. The square root of x plus 40 squared is x plus 40. Now, on the right-hand side, though, this is the thing that gives most students trouble. We have a binomial. Binomial. Our first term is square root x minus 5. Our second term is 5. And what we're doing is we're squaring a plus b, the two terms. Now, at this particular point, it's important for you to know that pattern of what you get when you square a binomial. You get the first term squared. Now, x minus, squared x minus 25 squared is x minus 25. That's the first term squared. Plus or minus, depending upon what this sign is here, 2 times the first term times the second term. That's 10 square root x minus 25 plus the second term squared. That's plus 25. Now, notice we've gotten rid of the square root on the x plus 40, but we still have a square root on the x minus 25. So that takes us back to we have a, an equation in, uh, involving radicals to solve. So we've got to go back to the beginning and isolate the radical again. All right, so first of all, let's subtract x from each side. Secondly, notice that minus 25 and plus 25 is 0. So we get... 40 is equal to 10 square root x minus 25. Now I'll divide both sides by 10 to isolate the radical. So, so I have 4 equals square root x minus 25. Now we're ready to square both sides again. We square both sides again. We get 16 equals x minus 25. And when we add 25 to both sides, we get x equals 41. Now, we do definitely need to check this. So our left-hand side, square root 41 plus 40 minus square root 41 minus 25. Now, 41 plus 40 is 81. The square root of 81 is 90. Uh, is 9. The square root of 81 is 9. Now, 41 minus 25 is... 16. Square root of 16 is 4, and 9 minus 4 is 5. So it checks. That means we get to keep our solution. x equals 41. Yay! All right. Now, um, please, please, please remember, when you have a radical plus or minus something and you're squaring it, you have to square it like a binomial. You can't just square each term. If you do that, you will not prosper.
I promise you that. Now, let's go to inequalities, radical inequalities. Now, let's take a look at an example as we're talking about this. Negative 3 plus square root x minus 4 is less than 2. Here is an example of a radical inequality. Now, there are basically two schools of thought to doing these. And I'm going to show you one method and then also the other method because sometimes one method works a lot better than the other way. They're very similar, so it's, it's not that much of a problem. But first of all, if you have an inequality, you do want to isolate the radical. So we'll do that by adding 3 to both sides here. We get square root x minus 4 is less than 5. Now, first of all, you have to realize that the quantity underneath the radical has to not be negative. In other words, x minus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0. And it has to be true that the square root of x minus 4 is less than 5. Now, we can solve this first inequality. We get x is greater than or equal to 4. Now, the second one, since this radical is always not negative, we can square both sides of this inequality. The inequality sign does not change directions. So we get x minus 4 is less than 25. Add 4 to both sides, we get x is less than 29. And these are connected with and. That's very important. Now, let's look at this. And uh, what we'll do is we'll say, all right, here is 4 on the number line. Here is 29. Now, x is greater than or equal to 4 is a closed circle on 4, and we want to go to the right. x is less than 29 is an open circle on 29, and we want to go to the left. And since they're connected with and, we want the region of overlap, which is the region from 4 up to 29, but not including 29. So the solution would be 4 is less than or equal to x is less than 29. And we do that by paying attention to domain and solving the inequality. Now, let's take a look at this, this inequality again. Let's clone this and throw it down here. And we'll go down after it. There we go. Now, if we wanted to solve this, there's another way we could do this. We could say, all right, we're going to solve the inequality negative 3 plus square root x minus 4 equals 2. Now, when we do, what we're going to get is the boundary that this inequality has between parts that work and parts that don't work. Now, uh, in solving this equation, we would isolate the radical. We get square root x minus 4 equals 5. Square both sides, we get x minus 4 equals 25. Add 4, we get x equals 29. Okay, now, so here we go. We have a number line, and on this number line is 29. Now, we also ask ourselves, what is the domain of this? Well, the domain is x minus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0. We solve that already as x is greater than or equal to 4. So here we have 4 also. Now, what we can do is we can uh, check a number from each region in the original inequality. And if that number works, then we'll take that region. And if the number doesn't work, we won't take that region. But first, let's deal with the endpoints. Here we have x is greater than or equal to 4. So this is going to be a closed circle. Here we have x is equal. Here we have just less than in the original one. So this is going to be an open circle because when x is 29, we get the 2 are equal, and we don't want that. Now, let's try a number like 0 down here, negative 3 plus the square root of negative 4. Well, that's undefined, so we can't possibly use that region. Now, let's try a number between 4 and 29, let's say um, 8. Negative 3 plus, now, square root 8 minus 4. 8 minus 4 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, negative 3 minus 2 or plus 2 is negative 1, negative 1 is less than 2, is true. So we do want this region here. And then let's try a number greater than 29. How about 40? 
uh, 40 minus 4 is 36, square root of 36 is 6, negative 3 plus 6 is 3, and 3 is not less than 2, so we don't want that region. So either way, we arrive at the same solution, which is 4 is less than or equal to x is less than 29. Okay, now, uh, sometimes one method will work better, sometimes the other method will work better. And so... Uh, there are lots of problems in the solution videos for you to view and watch and think about as I talk through the solutions and everything. So I invite you to watch all of those solution videos. And we're done.